Kirby's Dream Land 3 was developed by HAL Laboratory and released on November 27, 1997 in North America for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Oddly enough, it was released prior to its Japanese counterpart, Hoshino Kirby 3, which released in Japan on March 27, 1998 for the Super Famicom. Kirby's Dream Land 3 was the first game in the Kirby's Dream Land series to feature full-color graphics, and makes full use of them with its eye-catching crayon-style animation. Due to its supposed low level of difficulty, the game initially received a rather lukewarm reception, but has since grown into a timeless classic that continues to warm the hearts of those that play it. I've played other games in the Kirby franchise, but this was my first experience with Dream Land 3, and I truly fell in love with this game. It really is such a fun and rewarding game to play, and I can't wait to talk about it in more detail. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, let's talk about the story of Kirby's Dream Land 3, which for the most part is told through the use of a single cutscene shown to the player before the title screen. There is no dialogue to tell us what's happening in this cutscene, but we can easily gather from the many colorful drawings that a dark force has fallen upon Popstar and has begun to infect many of its inhabitants. Kirby, fishing with his friend Gooey at the time, witnesses this amalgamation of darkness that's infecting his planet and knows it's up to him and his animal friends to once again save Popstar from the brink of destruction. Once we, the player, take control of Kirby, it's our duty to free the infected inhabitants of Popstar, of which there are five, each appearing at the end of their respective world, from the clutches of darkness. A pretty straightforward and well-used storyline, but I think it works very well here as a motivator for Kirby's actions, also fitting rather well into the setting of the Kirby universe, in my opinion. Just a fun hero story that anyone from kids to adults can understand and empathize with. Moving on to gameplay, Kirby's Dream Land 3, similar to the last game I talked about, Donkey Kong Country, is a 2D side-scrolling platform style game. However, as you can imagine, the mechanics are quite different. If you've ever played a Kirby game, you'll know that Kirby has the ability to endlessly float upwards, similar to a balloon, by repeatedly pressing the jump button, in this case B. He also can suck up almost anything, blocks and enemies included, and then choose to spit them out or absorb them through the use of the Y button. If Kirby absorbs an enemy that has elemental characteristics, he then gains a new ability based on that element in place of his vacuum. This allows players to approach the same scenario in a myriad of different ways, meaning one playthrough will most likely never be the same as the last. This variation is even further increased due to the presence of the many animal friends that Kirby can join up with. When this occurs, the elemental ability that Kirby has changes drastically based on the animal. My personal favorite combination is definitely Nago the Cat with the Broom ability because he uses Kirby like a washcloth and is just so darn cute. There really are so many combinations that it can be hard to keep track of them all, but in my opinion, this element of surprise adds a lot to the fun of Kirby's Dream Land 3. Kirby does have a few other moves, namely the slide kick, which I rarely ever used, and of course the ability to run. But for one of the more annoying parts of the game, in my opinion, is that whenever you use a move like a vacuum or an elemental attack, your run gets cancelled, making you have to re-input the already slightly finicky double tap forward. I never liked when games used a run like this, but after a while you do get used to it. Similarly to Donkey Kong Country, Kirby's Dream Land 3 uses a life and game over system. However, in this case, it is much more forgiving. When you lose a life, you restart at the beginning of the room you were currently in when you died, and when you run out of lives, you just have to restart the level you were on from the beginning, which is far less punishing than having a save point feature. This may have contributed to the game's so-called low level of difficulty, but when played in retrospect, this particular life system is very appreciated. Many games coming out around the time of Kirby's Dream Land 3's release suffer from some degree of artificial difficulty, in my opinion, due to having to replay a ton of content you already cleared because you couldn't save. But in this case, that really wasn't an issue. Now, that doesn't mean you won't be replaying content, but it is to a much lessened degree. Overall, the gameplay of Kirby's Dream Land 3 was very fun and varied, keeping me interested from start to finish. Okay, now let's talk about levels. As I just mentioned, the levels of Kirby's Dream Land 3, much like any other Kirby game, are divided up into a series of rooms, each room having a door leading to the next that the player must find. I personally prefer this layout over typical side-scroller levels that take place in one area from start to finish. 
The use of rooms allows there to be many different environments in one single level. For example, in World 5-2, we start on a snowy mountain and eventually move to its interior a lava-filled cave. You never know what you're going to find when you step through a door for the first time, and that really adds to the overall excitement of the game. Now in order to fully complete each level, we must help out the characters that wait for us through the star door at the end of each level by doing various tasks for them. These tasks range from gathering items to completing memory-based minigames. These side quests really added another level of difficulty and replayability to the game, making me want to go back and play the levels I already beat, but in a slightly different way. The one downside in my opinion to these tasks is that they are required in order to get the true ending of the game. The final boss can only be fought after you complete all the side quests and get the heart stars that the inhabitants of Popstar give you at the end of each level in return for your assistance, and use them to purify the boss at the end of each world. Making the player 100% the game in order to fight the final boss and see the credits was not a good idea in my opinion, as I'm sure there are people that just want to clear each level once, and then move on. I personally didn't mind too much, but there were a few times that doing the side quest was a bit of a chore, like the time you have to collect all of Rob the Robot's parts and reassemble him. Just a little bit too long of a side quest that was really hard to get through without a guide. But overall, I had fun even playing through levels more than once, because you have to approach them in a new way, unlike getting kicked back to a save point and having to do the exact same thing you just did over again. As for the design of the levels, overall they are just challenging enough to keep things interesting without becoming overly convoluted. However, there are a few sections in which you can basically skip everything by just continuously flying, but this takes significantly more time. As you'd expect from a Kirby game, they are all fun and rather unique levels. Now let's talk about the visuals. As I said in the beginning of the video, Kirby Zoom Man 3 features crayon or picture book style animation. The colorful levels and characters really made the game a joy to play. I never had a moment where I thought something looked bad or ugly, just pure cuteness from beginning to end. I really wish more games would adopt this sort of art style because I think it works really well, especially in a 2D setting. The art team really did go crazy here, making so many great character designs. I often found myself having so much fun just looking out for new cute enemies and characters. It's hard to come up with just one favorite, but if I had to say, I'd probably go with the Waddle Dees riding on rafts because you can't look at them without cracking a smile. I really fell in love with this game's art style, and I think anyone who's played it would say the same. Alright, time for music. The music of Kirby's Dream Man 3 borrows a lot from the Kirby catalog, but that is by no means a bad thing. Personally, I never get tired of hearing songs like the Popstar theme or the Jumping Challenge music because they remind me of my childhood playing the Crystal Shards on the N64. In my opinion, for the most part, Kirby music is upbeat and fun to listen to, and I found Kirby's Dream Land 3's music to be no exception to that rule. Just loading up the game and listening to that great title screen music makes you want to hurry up and play some more Kirby. Last but not least, let's talk about the bosses. I feel that Hal did a great job scaling the difficulty of the bosses of Kirby's Dream Land 3. The first boss, Wispy, can pretty much be defeated with your eyes closed, but by the time you get to the final boss, you'll be lucky to make it out in one piece. I personally found them all to be very fun fights, and I really like the designs of each boss, especially Ponoko and the Tanuki and Fox pair. After you complete the game, there is a boss rush mode that is extremely challenging, so to anyone seeking more difficulty, I'd recommend you give it a shot. It's also required for 100% completion of the game, so it is definitely worth the time. Well, that pretty much wraps things up. I know this was a rather long video, so thanks a lot for watching all the way to the end, it really means a lot to me. I really enjoyed this game so much, and I'm happy I got to share with you guys too, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in playing Kirby's Dream Land 3 for yourself, it is of course available on the Nintendo Switch Online service. I'm not quite sure yet, but I really feel like I want to try reviewing all the games on the service, so if you're interested in seeing more content like this, stick around, and I'll see you in the next one. Hack out!